The Swedish Chant Stakes is a grade three. It's the eighth race on Gulfstream Saturday card, and it's part of the all stakes three year old, all three year old stakes pick five, which is a pretty cool sequence, if you ask me. Um, it's running a mile and a 16th on the turf for three year old fillies. And if we recall this race last year, Cairo Consort was the star of the day without question. Uh, she broke poorly from the gate and just spotted the field like 10 lengths and closed like a freight train and in a style that she doesn't normally run didn't normally run that way uh and just got up at the wire it was just a brilliant race and if we get anything close to that this year uh then we'll have a nice uh, a nice beginning to the sequence if we look at the field uh, we've got a couple of familiar faces life's an audible who uh we saw at saratoga initially and then ran in the breeders cup juvenile turf uh we've got some new shooters in milliot who's uh this would be the second start uh, following the shipping over from Europe. Uh, then we've got uh, Madame Mischief and Pharaoh's Wine, or a couple who have uh, been around a little while, and Golden Ghost coming in from the West Coast. So if we take a look at this field, we'll go through them one at a time. Uh, number five is Makanga, and that's he's the, she rather, is the lone speed. Um, she had it all her own way on the front end to graduate. She had Johnny Velasquez, you know, the Hall of Famer, doing what he does on the front end, just measured out her speed and took it very easily. Had no competition for the pace whatsoever, so she had it her own way. Not going to have it in this case. Uh, there are others like uh, you see there's quite a few EPs, horses who are going to like to be up near the leaders, so she's not going to get away with a soft lead. Um, and she, her speed figures are a little light, so I think she needs another jump. So I'm going to pass on Makanga at this time. We can recall Life's an Audible from the Breeders, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf as well as uh, running at Saratoga. And uh, in the last race, um, coming off the bench, this one rated at the rear before swinging out wide with a belated kick. Uh, the thing is, though, it took a while uh, to get going. Um, and I saw, noticed that Irad was all over Life's Inaudible to uh, get her to engage. And that's kind of the M.O. with Life's Inaudible. There's a lot of races where uh, she just, you, you wonder about that will to win. And her father was the same way. Uh, if you recall Audible, it was, we just kind of wondered if he really wanted to be out there or he knew he was supposed to try to win instead of just running around the track. Uh, so I do wonder about the killer instinct of life's inaudible. And so uh, she is certainly a player here class-wise, speed-wise. But uh, I'd be a little reticent to, to put all my eggs in, in the life's inaudible basket at a short price when uh, she does have that little uh, uh, that little problem with winning races. So life's inaudible, we'll use for sure, but I'm not banking on being a win candidate. <coughs> Excuse me. Madam Mischief uh, worked out a pretty good trip in the Ginger Brew last time, but just wasn't enough late. And uh, this one is on an upward progression since coming off the bench. So uh, another jump seems logical and would also put her in the mix. Uh, Paco Lopez, her jockey in the last race, is on Golden Ghost this time. Uh, however, there could be a lot of reasons for that. It could be contractual. It could be uh, it's not necessarily rider's choice. Uh, but in my opinion, Madam's, Madam Mischief uh, offers a lot better value and I think has a lot better chance to compete in this race. Another jump forward, she's right there. Style points uh, is a little, uh, I'm, I'm being a little bold, I'll admit, uh, throwing out a Christophe Clement horse on turf. But here's the thing. Uh, style points won in her second start, rated just off the pace uh, and uh, just off the leader and then kicked on in the stretch. Uh, it was an average field, uh, so she, certainly another jump is required. Can she do that? Sure. It's Christophe Clement. But the thing is, his horses generally are very good in their second start. That's like a really big angle with him. So I wasn't surprising that Style Points ran a really nice race. Uh, her first race, she was up the track um, and uh, running in the same as Dynamic Pricing. And uh, really didn't do a whole lot of running. Had a fairly soft trip, pretty easy. Not going to be so here with other competitors, a little and a step up in class. So because it's Christophe Clement, I think the price is probably going to be an underlay. And uh, in this race in particular, being 
fairly well balanced. I want to have value. So I'm going to look elsewhere. I wouldn't talk you out of using style points if you want to. Uh, underneath would be the extent of my interest, though. Pharaoh's wine is very interesting. And I think one is this is one that is maybe going to fly under the radar a little bit. And I love that. Uh, improved steadily at two, culminating in a good second in the Jessamine. Uh, and considering she was wide for most of the race, I thought that was a really solid effort. Certainly wasn't going to get to Buku. Nobody did. But she ran uh, what I thought was a really nice race, and it did continue a progression that she had at two. Uh, the last was off the turf, so I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to draw a line through that and not worry about it. But I do think it served as a tightener. And she didn't finish badly with an okay third. Uh, back on her preferred surface, second off the layoff for Dale Romans, uh, I think this one could be in a position to factor late. We'll need another jump forward, but it looks very possible, and I think you're going to get a price. So, Pharaoh's Wine, I like in this spot. Golden Ghost uh, struggled at Saratoga this summer before heading to Del Mar to graduate. Uh, now, that right off the bat there says to me that's kind of a red flag because she couldn't handle the class of the east coast uh went to softer fields out in california and got the job done the other part of it was uh, she rode the rail uh, saved all the ground and then drew off pretty easy ground saving trip uh so uh, she followed that up on all weather track at gulfstream and it was kind of a similar run she was on the rail saved ground ducked out a little bit to kick away nicely. So she had everything her way, and she had two golden rails and two straight starts. So this certainly will be more of a challenge. She's parked on the outside in post eight, and uh, you know she's going to have to work out a trip, and all the speed is to the inside. So I, I think it, there's a lot of things in here that inhibit her from having a good race. The good side is that you do get Paco Lopez, uh, who's having a really nice meet and certainly knows what he's doing around Gulfstream. But uh, I think she's probably going to be a little short. And I don't want horses who had it that easy coming in. It's kind of the same thing about with style points. Uh, they just seem to have it all their own way. And with stepping up in class, that's usually a, a red flag. So uh, I'll pass on Golden Ghost. Dynamic pricing, uh, you know, Chad Brown's barn. Uh, has finally started to show signs of life over the last weekend. Got a couple of wins. So we can't necessarily use that excuse. Uh, this is a horse that uh, just got up after racing pretty greenly in the debut against what was kind of an average to mediocre field. Um, she was late to engage, but she did show good acceleration. I did like to see that. Um, way to be Marie was second in that race, and she won next out. And uh, style points, as we mentioned, was in that field as well. Uh, she's likely to improve in her second start, uh, but she also still may be a little green. Hasn't raced in a while. And while well, certainly Chad Brown knows how to get a horse to run professionally, it uh, has been a while. And uh, really the ultimate way to get rid of uh, greenness and get a horse salty is to run them. So uh, there is that concern I have, especially since you're likely going to get uh, a shorter price than, than you really ought to, uh, being by Chad Brown. Uh, notice that IRAD's not on dynamic pricing, and uh, I wonder if that is maybe a, a signal of some kind. But anyway, again, looking for value, looking for horses with a little more experience. Uh, so I'm going to pass on dynamic tracing, pricing uh, because I don't think we'll get the commensurate value for a horse who's never been in stakes company before, who just who just beat a pretty weak or average field of maidens. So then we go to Militat, or Miliat rather. Uh, second start in the U.S., had really nice acceleration in the wait a while for a good second. Uh, worked through the traffic well in only her second start, and I thought that was uh, really the most impressive thing. I really liked her uh, late kick, really liked it. I, I think she's got a very nice career ahead of her in the States. Uh, she's going to have to break better with uh but w w and be a little more forwardly placed in a smaller field and that may be to her detriment to a degree because she'll have to engage in the race a little earlier but this is early in her career and i think that's certainly possible she showed uh to me a lot of signs that this is going to be a really good horse uh, 
So uh, to me, she's poised for another move forward uh, and I think is uh, the likely win candidate, particularly when you consider uh, that we do have a lot of horses that will be up near the lead. She is the lone closer. And if she can work out a trip or at least get into position perhaps a little earlier, then I think Milliot has a really good chance of taking this race down. So if we look at our wagering strategy, uh, we're going to use Life's Inaudible, uh, In Madam Mischief, Pharaoh's Wine, and Milliot. Those are our four that we're going to use with a primary interest on Milliot as our prime win candidate. For value, I think we're going to get a good price on Pharaoh's Wine. And I liked what I saw from this horse getting steadily better and did have a nice second in the last race. And I think uh, class-wise, she's a fit here. And uh, I think, you know, that she has a very good chance of either winning or at least being in the money. So let's go across the board with the four. Um, I'm going to want a price of at least six to one or better. And hopefully we'll get it. Uh, anything lower than that, then it'll be prohibitive. Uh, but to me, I think six to one sounds about right to me. Maybe, you know, nine to two at the very lowest. Uh, but we'll go for value in that respect. Then we're going to key box with Milliad on top uh, with the one, two, and four. And then we're going to box the four and the seven. So if our hunch is right about uh, Pharaoh's wine and we've analyzed her correctly and she gets in the second with Milliad, then we double up and we've got a nice, a nice exact payout. Then we're going to go trifecta. We're going to key the seven for first and second with one, two, and four, one, two, and four. Then we're going to uh, have another trifecta with Pharaoh's Wine and Milliot, four, seven, four, seven, with one, two, three, and six. And we'll throw in uh, style points and dynamic pricing into the mix for third. You can maybe, if you want to go crazy and throw in Golden Ghost, okay. Uh, but that makes, uh, so that, you know, it's not that much more of a ticket. So if you want to do that, I could see it. And then we'll go four, seven with one, two, three, six with four, seven. But uh, we're going with experience. I think that's the the, uh, the most important thing in this race. Uh, granted, Milliot, only a couple of starts, I know, but uh, shows talent uh, more so than some of the others. And that's what I liked more than anything else. Uh, but Farrell's Wine is our value play. Um, and I think uh, hopefully... We can, uh, uh, we can, we can cash, and what is a pretty good betting race. I think this is. Uh, there's no clear-cut winners in here, so there's a lot of different ways to go. Hopefully, we've got the right one.